pet parents, and welcome to another episode of Natural Pets TV. I'm joined by Heidi Nevela, Dr. Jody, and Dr. Ken. And we're going to focus on something that a lot of folks get a little squeamish about, and they also don't really understand all of its functions. So Dr. Ken, I want to throw this to you. Share with us all that you know about the liver. The liver. Uh, what an important topic. And, and the, the importance of the liver has been recognized for centuries. If, if one looks at traditional Chinese medicine, most of the uh, target is around the liver. Um, and it's an extremely important organ in the body. To kind of sum up what the liver does, I've come up with a, a, an analogy of what it is. And it's basically the sewage treatment plant for the body. Um, it is the organ that detoxifies everything we take into our body. And yet, believe it or not, the food you eat is toxic. Uh, it produce, any protein produces ammonia. Ammonia is toxic to the body. The liver has to immediately turn that into urea, which is a safe nitrogen product to circulate. So it is extremely important with regards to protecting us uh, from toxicity. It alters medications that we take to make them, again, more safe, easy to eliminate. Um, it produces uh, vitamins, minerals. It is the key area that produces new sugar when the body needs sugar, um, uses amino acids or uh, pro breaks down protein and shifts those amino acids to cells so they can go about making their living. Um, it, so it, it is really the center of the universe for our bodies. I, I really like that you brought up that your own food is a toxin if the liver isn't functioning properly. Um, and a great example of that is the little dogs that are born with liver shunts. Right. And I happen to have one of those, so this topic's near and dear to my heart for that reason. And so I have to be very careful how I feed him because I'm managing his uh, liver shunt imbalance with food. Uh, there are prescription diets on the market that are intended to help with that problem, but if you actually talk to the veterinarians at those prescription diet companies, they themselves will say, don't start those prescription diets too soon in the progression of the liver disease because the diet is based on restricting protein. The right. protein you mentioned, when it breaks down and produces all that ammonia, the liver needs to clear that. But our body also needs protein. Exactly. And so if you start restricting that protein too soon, what happens? You, you lose muscle mass. Right. And what so many people don't realize is that uh, your muscle is also a detox organ. So your liver, your kidneys, and your muscle can actually help detoxify. And a lot of people think that uh, the liver stores those toxins, but it's really a filter. Exactly. And, and um, so if you restrict protein too soon and you lose that muscle mass, then you will actually die sooner rather than later because when the liver fails, your muscle's gone, you won't have the muscle be able to take over with that detox function. So you really don't want to start restricting protein uh, like conventional knowledge is kind of out there, um, feed those protein restricted diets. Uh, so again, that's why I'm all for the um, actually higher protein meat-based diet. But we do, we can help the body with the detox function um, by clearing that excess of waste protein out the bowel. And so um, I call it the nitrogen trap. Actually, uh, that term was coined by one of the prescription diet companies many years ago. But basically what it is is lots of blended fruits and vegetables to grab that waste mm -hmm. protein, take it out in the poo so it doesn't become a burden to the liver. Right, right. Um, yeah, that's, it's a strategy we use for the shunt kids is to try and bind up some of the ammonia that's produced by protein from the bacteria in the gut. Even going further, you know, w with regards to its function is you mentioned that our food is toxic, but we don't realize that our medications can be toxic as well and everything we breathe or take in uh, has a certain aspect to it of, it of it where the molecules can be toxic and the liver's job is, is to take care of that. And you, t you mentioned the word detoxification. There's a lot of misunderstanding about detoxification out there. One is that 
the assumption that we're static, that somehow if we don't, if we fast for a bit and we take certain herbs and, and, and spices and essential oils and stuff, our body will stop and we will just release all of these toxins from our body. That's not how it works because the body just to do its work is going to produce toxins. It's going to produce super radical uh, oxygen uh, compounds. So just resting we are going to be producing toxins. It's a matter of decreasing the toxins. And I think that's what Heidi likes to specialize in. <laughs> oh, well, I, I love the topic. Um, the, there are different phases of detoxification too, depending on the needs of the animal. But just day to day, uh, everything you're talking about, the liver, the function, is, it's sort of like the immune system, just an incredible process going on in the body. There is a belief that the, and, and on some level it's true, that the liver can continue to exist even under great duress, you know, even just a part of it. But there does get to be a tipping point where uh, now, now we're, we've gone beyond dysfunction into, into failure and it does happen. But before you get there, and it, it, there is some just very gentle nutritional things you can add in that you can do safely because there are different levels of detoxifying liver herbs or, or nutraceuticals or supplements. So, you know, whether it's milk thistle or artichoke, those are generally recognized as safe. And it's just a nice toning, balancing, right. um, nutritional su support given to maybe, because liver now is, is not only doing all these bodily processes, but that now it's also um, impact, being impacted by everything that's going on in our homes. And no matter what, you know, whatever uh, level of food or water you're giving to your pet. So that's just a, a nice toning, balancing one that supports everything plus the, the elimination process, getting it out of the body. Um, there are more advanced herbs you can put into the body that actually can pull inter, inorganic compounds and synthetic derivatives out of the cell and the tissue lining and all that besides as another support to the liver right. so it's not un, you know, uncumbered by those things. Um, those, when you're getting a little deeper into detox, those are not necessarily good for puppies or, or kittens. You know, there's a life stage aspect to some of those. And then there actually are plants that can protect the liver cells and even go so far in, in some animals if they've got the immunity um, levels to stop toxins from penetrating the liver cells and you know, still continue that regeneration. So that's, those are the ones you get into when, when your animal is really impaired, um, the, the toxin elimination process, something stopped it it's become overburdened and it needs some extra help. And one so. of the keys there is to know if they're impaired. H how do we know they're impaired? And I like to em um, empower the pet parent with um, knowing what blood work mm -hmm. to ask for. Um, not all blood work is created equal. I'll commonly get the comment, well, you know, my other veterinarian did all the blood work. Um, there's so much blood work out there and it's, it's not all the same. One of the really important tests that you want to look for in a blood panel is called ALT. That's what we call the liver specific enzyme in a pet. Um, there's also alkaline phosphatase or SAP, but that's not liver specific, meaning there are a lot of different things that can elevate that. Also, um, if the ALT is elevated, it means there's some liver cell damage, but it doesn't tell us the cause, the severity, the prognosis of it. What will tell us actually if there's a liver function problem, of course, is the bile acid panel. And that's a little bit more complicated and you can totally miss liver disease if you don't check a bile acid panel, especially in the liver shunt dogs. And that requires them to fast and then have their blood drawn and then get a little bit of food because you're actually testing to right. see if that food's becoming toxic to them. Then you draw blood again and you see if they were able to metabolize that property, properly. You can have a totally normal ALT but have an elevated bile acid panel. And in the little dogs like Yorkies that commonly are born with liver shunts, we really want to even suggest that they get um, uh, maybe a bile acid checked as part of their pre-anesthetic screening, even for neutering, because they're born with a congenital liver shunt. And that's why you'll hear the horror story that somebody lost a pet to very appropriate anesthetic for spaying or neutering or dentistry because the right things weren't checked on the blood work. So it's not even that anybody did anything wrong, it's just that that got missed as part of their diagnosis. Mm -hmm. 
And I think that monitoring is important. I mean, I, I'm sure your experience, my experience is, as pets age, especially the dogs, we begin to see elevations in their liver enzymes. And uh, if we can spot these sooner, especially the ALT, then we can turn to things like milk thistle, artichoke, SAMe, some of the other things that are available, and stop the oxidative damage. Because here's the beauty of the liver. It's one of the few organs that can actually regenerate its cells. So we can take it to the brink of cirrhosis, but if there are some living cells and we can stop the damage, it can actually begin to regenerate itself. And so some of the symptoms that pet guardians can be looking for um, at home are nausea, right. uh, vomiting, um, not wanting to eat, loss of appetite, uh, weight loss, seizures. Um, so hopefully um, things will get caught before that and that's why uh, blood screenings are important. And a yellowing of the tissues as well. Right, and then we know things are pretty right. severe and we really have lost right. liver function at that point. Dr. Jody, you mentioned that there are a few foods that we can be feeding them Give us a few examples. Right, yeah, we're all familiar with um, how important the herbal milk thistle is, but uh, in your own kitchen, the cruciferous vegetables are very important. Uh, the liver has all these different metabolic pathways, and for example, milk thistle works on one pathway, and the SAMe works on another pathway, which a lot of veterinarians uh, or pet parents know as Denisil. That's right. a, a brand name of a specific SAMe that a lot of us use, but cruciferous vegetables work on the methylation pathway, and methylation is, is really important as far as detoxification. So broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, now we all think, oh, you know, that's a flatulence problem <laughs> with those, and uh, we don't want our large deep-chested dogs to bloat, um, so you want to introduce those things slowly and carefully. If you give a carnivore a big chunk of vegetable like that, it's a lot of it's just going to go right through. It can make for a great treat, but you're not going to get the nutritive benefit from it. But if you break it down, so I, I always like to relate things to nature and think, well, how in nature would a carnivore be getting any cruciferous vegetables? Well, from the gut of that prey. And so what's happened there, it's been warmed, it's been churned, so we need to mimic that. So we can run those fruits and vegetables through a blender, warm them up a little bit and then mix them you know with that kind of a meat-based species appropriate type diet and so that's just one way that we can mimic that uh, liver detox pathway and help those animals that have a predisposition or a, a current liver type of an illness well certainly some great information and some wonderful tips thanks for joining us here on natural pets tv Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. It's a lot of fun, a lot of information, and we want to keep the dialogue going. Let's do that in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe because we've got a whole season of great episodes, great topics, and great guests. If you want to learn more about our guests here for Heidi Nevela, you can do that at naturapets with a Z.com. For Dr. Jody, it's Dr. Jody's naturalpets.com. And for Dr. Ken, it's thewelldog.com. You can always reach out to us at petworldinsider.com and all of the social media channels at Pet World Insider. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you again soon.